Today we're going to continue on the Learn CSS colors by building a set of colored markers on FreeCodeCamp. And so if I resume the project, we're on step 21. Um, we're going to do the next 10 or so. So step 21, there are two main color models, the additive RGB, so that's at red, green, blue. Um, that's used on electronic devices and the subtractive CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow and black, which is used in print. Um, in this case, we're going to work with the RGB model, so red, green, blue. So that means the colors begin as black, essentially at 0, 0, 0, so red, 0, green, 0, blue, 0, and then progressively get um, change colors, I guess, as it goes through <clears throat> sort of the scale. I think the scale goes from 0 to 155, but I might be wrong. Um, but anyway, we need to create a new CSS rule that targets the container, so dot container. And we open up our curly braces and we'll set the background dash color to RGB and then zero, 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 exactly like they've done there. And there we go, we can see our background color is black now. <clears throat> so submit and go to the next challenge. So step 22, a function is a piece of code that can take an input and perform a specific action. The CSS RGB function accepts values or arguments for red, green, blue, and produces a color. Um, ah, so th the value can be um, a number here, and it's actually zero to 255. And then, so zero means there's absolutely none of that color, so no red, um, no green, no blue, so it's black. And then 255 means there's 100% of that color on that scale. So in the dot one CSS rule, replace the color keyword red with RGB function, so RGB, and we open up a pair of parentheses, and the red value will set to 255, and zero for green and zero for blue. And there we go. Let's check that code. So notice the background color of your marker is still red. This is because we have set the red value to the maximum of 255, and then obviously green and blue are zero. Now use the RGB function to set the other colors. So for this one, we'll do RGB, and it will be zero for red, 255 for green, and zero for blue. And then that's obviously a bright green here. And then again, if we do the same for blue, it will be at 0, 0, 255. So that's the maximum number of, uh, of blue, I guess. And there we go, we've got our colored markers. Step 24, while the uh, red and blue markers look the same, the green one is much lighter than it was before. That's because the green color keyword is actually a darker shade and it's about halfway between black and the maximum value for green. So you can see it's a really, really bright um, green here. So in the CSS, or in the two CSS class rule, set the green value to 127. So that's gonna lower the intensity of the green. And then you can see here, it's a little bit darker um, and then kind of more in line with the other colors. <clears throat> so step 25, now add a little more vertical space between your markers and the edge of the container element therein. So in the container CSS class, I'm going to do the padding shorthand property. Uh, yep, so that's going to be, um, what's it, 10 pixels top and bottom, and then left and right will be zero. And we do that. So there we go. We can see there's a bit more padding at the top and bottom. And if we check that code, <clears throat> perfect. Step 26, in the additive RGB color model, primary colors are colors that, when combined, create pure white. But for this to happen, each color needs to be at its highest intensity. So before you combine colors, set the green marker back to pure green. And so that's 255. And then there we go. That should be fine. And step 27, now that you have the primary RGB colors, it's time to combine them. So within the container value, um, set the red, green, and blue values to the max of 255. So 255, 255, 255. There we go. And that's gone back to white. So step 28, secondary colors are the colors that you get when you combine primary colors. Um, so if you noticed some secondary colors in the last step, um, let's see when we're changing the red, green, and blue values. To create the sec first secondary color yellow, update the RGB function in the dot one 
CSS rule to combine pure red and pure green. So it's red, green, blue, so it'll be 255, 255. And you can see we've changed that to yellow now. So let's submit and go to the next one. So step 29, create the next secondary color cyan, update the RGB function to be pure green and pure blue. So that will be the blue one. We just want to add 255. And there we go, we can see we've got cyan. And finally, step 30, to create the final secondary color magenta, update the RGB function in three CSS rule to combine pure blue and pure red. So red must have been the first one of RGB, we'll do 255. And there we go, we've got our magenta color. So that should be looking good. And there we go, we can go on to the next challenge. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.